Hey guys. So if you're watching this, you've already seen um, my glue, grab and glue videos. There are two parts, all working in this journal. You've either seen one or both. And um, it's, this is a really fun way to do journaling. Again, it was inspired by Shannon Green and Cindy Utter. I'm going to link their channels in the description below. And I really am loving this right now. Yes, I love to paint. I still paint. But this is a fun way to just do something fun and artistic and interesting quickly, easily, and use up the stash you have rather and, you know, in a fun way that you can preserve rather than tossing stuff out because you have too much stuff in your art room. <laughs> um, I really love this. I did want to go over a few things with you in case you're interested in doing this. Um, so really what you need as far as stuff to do this with is a journal. This is a homemade one. Again, it came in Happy Mail. It was in a swap, I think, in Crazy Island Family or something. And I've got a little bin of these that you guys send me every once in a while. They're really fun. I also make them sometimes, and they're a lot of fun, again, to make and throw together, to maybe send to um, somebody that you don't know on the rack or Happy Mail list in one of my two Facebook groups. The links for those are in the description below. And um, maybe maybe trade with them. Um, they can be made out of any kind of paper. This one has all kinds of different painting papers in it. Um, and then I just glued in what I have. I didn't think about what, about it too much. I just picked. Oh, that one's not stuck down very well. I just picked things um, out of my stash and um, without thinking about it too awfully much, picked things that I thought maybe went together. Let's get this fixed. Maybe it went together to create an interesting composition. And of course, I have a lot of words. Well, I've always, I like words. You all know that by now. And um, I put a little word or a quote on each page. You could, of course, take it a little further and do doodling or painting on it if you chose, but you don't have to. Um, some things that work well for doing this is you want glues that are going to dry fairly quickly and that aren't going to stay sticky. Um, and you want, honestly, glues that are inexpensive. So a glue stick. This is a Yoohoo glue stick, but you could use um, Elmer's or whatever one that you have. I would recommend one that's permanent, not temporary. Um, and you do have to make sure with the glue stick that you really, you know, stick things down well. Um, but you can see on this page there's nothing that's sticking up. If you do it right, um, I missed that little tip of that little die cut. But if you do it right, um, it's going to be there. It's going to be fine. You also can use Elmer's Extreme. I talk about this in the video. This is Elmer's Extreme School Glue. Um, it's really strong. It dries quickly. Um, this is washable, but it works really well. Um, it's made for paper, so it works well. Um, a tape runner, permanent tape runner, or my new favorite thing, the glue dot adhesive runner. Um, and it leaves um, little glue squares. And so this is, oops, th these are really cool. These and the glue sticker, they're instantaneous. You don't have to wait for anything to dry. So you can sit down in your art room uh, for an hour if you have a small little journal like this one and get it done. Um, I know you guys saw a speed up video and it's like 50... I, I compressed it a little bit, and I think after I compressed it, it was about 40, 45 minutes. It took me about an hour and a half to do this one, front to back. Um, you'll need some scissors. I like to have a little gift card or old hotel card to scrape things down into the glue and make sure they're really stuck down well. If you're using a glue stick, I like to use my baby wipes to make sure there's no excess glue either on the page or on your fingers. And um, an X-Acto knife can come in handy, but the scissors will work if that's what you have. And um, a stapler. Um, this is a Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. Um, but sometimes I want to just, um, like up here in the front I did it, let's see. I just staple a little piece of a tag onto the end of a page. That works great. Um, the other thing that I do, um, yes, I have all my things in my art room organized in separate bins. I have one for just stamped people. I have another one for just doilies. But when I want to just do a glue book, I have a bin full of um, stuff. And I refill it from those other separate little bins. So this is the bin. It is, um, the big bin is from Target. So are the little dividers there. Um, from the bathroom organizing department. 
and plastics department. And I have, um, I, like th I like this setup because there's a little bit of space here to put taller papers in. Um, the, this set here came with these three longer containers and three little ones and then two big ones. And then I bought the big bins separately. Um, I have people, I have die cuts and focal points, little bitty scraps and odd items, um, non-paper items, brads, buttons, fabric flowers, teeny tiny die cuts, words. You know, I got a bin of just words, right? <laughs> you knew that. Um, and then we have mixed up some things. There we go. Okay, so then we have in these two bigger boxes, this, these are background papers, painting papers, uh, pieces of scrapbooking paper. These are focal point images that I could use, like a, like faces and people. Um, this one is really, oops, really great. This is from the Faber-Castell booth at um, Creativation, and that could definitely just be a focal point, and the quote on it is great. Um, I have one from Dina Wakely. This is one of her whoop, one of her postcards, um, and then I've got a little bag of tags, a little bag of envelopes and pockets, and some larger papers and stickers. So this setup works really well for me. And when I want to do a glue book, I can take my little bins out, I can set them around my desk, I can grab and go create my book, then everything can go back in the bin and up on the shelf out of the way quickly and easily. And when my, say, little bin of people runs low, I can refill it from my drawer of people. Um, I also have lots of these sort of things um, that I bought years ago. I bought the image sheets on, you know, um, eBay or something, and I could print them some more out and cut them out. I also have magazines to go through, a lot of them. So anyway, I just wanted to come on here really quick and give you an idea of how you could organize your stuff so that you can create something like the glue book, the grab and go glue book, easily, quickly, using what you have. Don't go out and buy anything special. Maybe you have um, a bunch of small cardboard boxes that you could do this with inside of a bin. Um, um, look around your house and your um, spare stuff, if you're like me, you have a spare thing of organizing supplies. <sighs> yes, I know, it's not normal. <laughs> um, but anyway, maybe you have something, you could do something like this, so you can have this bin on the shelf, and when you want to do a grab-and-go glue book, you can just pull it down, you can grab a journal, and you can have at it, and then when you're done, it easily gets cleaned up and, be, and put away, and your desk doesn't become a nightmare. <laughs> that's it for right now uh, yeah because my desk has been a nightmare a lot lately uh, that's it for right now like share and subscribe if you would please and if you can support my channel uh, by going over and shopping in my Etsy shop the link is in the description below along with like I said the two Facebook groups um, and the most important thing go out and have a great day do something nice for yourself because you deserve it There'll be more glue book videos coming, and we probably will do some live uh, on YouTube Live coming up soon if you would like. So let me know. All right, that's it, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.